Europa, I Sam. Welcome to another At The Bench update. So it's been a couple of weeks since the last one. Before we get going today, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. So some of you may get a bit of a shock today over a couple of things. Um, we'll get to them in a minute. Um, busy, busy, busy at the minute. You and Pete, thankfully, we've hit that plateau and kind of leveled off and the orders are returning to normal slowly. We've still got a backlog. Me and Hannah are getting through them as quick as we can. Literally 95 parcels left here yesterday and we're getting there. What's happened is basically a house taken over doing the postage. So I'm taking a little bit of responsibility, not responsibility, but a bit of the workload off Hannah. Um, so she can crack on packing. I then upload them onto DPD and UPS. Uh, they're then wrapped up and sent. So it's speeding us up massively. It's probably increased the well the output by at least 30%, I'd say. So thankfully, it's speeding things up. It's a bit more work and a bit more mind baffling for me to learn two new systems. Um, but yeah, it helps Hannah all the better. So if you haven't ordered us, please, please, please stay patient. We are getting through them. I think we're about 10 days behind at the minute, but we're getting there. We're catching up slowly. Um, it's just been absolutely manic. It really, really has been crazy busy. Uh, and of course, I'm a five-year-old, 10 to 10, uh, trying to keep ourselves sane as well. We work all weekend. Um, it's just one of those things. So please be patient. Do understand. Don't not put orders in. Please put your orders in because um, we need those, obviously, to keep going as well. Um, but if you haven't got an order in, just give us a little bit of patience. You'll get an email or a text off DPD as soon as your uh, parcel's posted. Um, so, yeah, just, just bear with us. We are getting there. So, that's out of the way. So, we've got a finished build, which I think we'll talk about first. So, this is my Peugeot Tamiya, sorry, Tamiya 124 Peugeot 307 WRC. Now, I did two things to this. This was my build for the Mark Hawkins Memorial build. And it was also a video build on the channel. Three parts that we did. They're great kits. Uh, they go together really well. And this scheme look absolutely fantastic. I'll pop some pics up as we have a chat about it. But came out really well. Beautiful scheme. Beautiful colour. Glad I changed the yellow to that lighter yellow though. Um, and the clear coat. All came out absolutely spot on. So very happy with this one. It does have the wrong wheels on it. As I've been told several times. I don't care. I said this in the last video. They're female fitment wheels, so Tamiya don't really do many others, so I can't just switch them. If I could, I would have really easily, um, but I can't. So it was that. I decided to make life easier, and we kept the kit wheels on there. doesn't bother me in the slightest, and it really shouldn't bother anybody else out there at all. Great kit. So we primed this in Tamiya Grey Primer. This was at the spray cans, decanted. Thinned about 10-15% with Tamiya Lekka Thinner with Retarder. Through the Apex, 18 PSI, 3-4 three, three, coats on there. Uh, we sanded it back between every coat of paint. We then sprayed it originally in TS-47, which is the colour call out uh, Renaissance Ash 4 on their decals. Uh, I didn't like it, I thought it was a touch dark, so I went over it with a few coats of TS-16 yellow, I think it is. Uh, and much, much happier with the yellow. Much more vibrant colour and looks a lot better. Uh, the Renaissance decals, no problem whatsoever. They went down really good. They look great, no problem at all. We gave it a Tamiya black panel line wash. Gravity Spain 2K clear coat went down as sweet as a nut as usual. No problems at all. I flattened it back with 12,000 micro mesh. And yeah, it does remove slight flaws on there. People say it doesn't. It actually does. I, I think it scuffs the surface up a touch and it'll remove. Very small high spots or little specks of dust and what have you. It won't do a lot, but it does something. And uh, then polished it up with Ultima Polishing uh, uh, Paste as well. We gave it a wax. Uh, the wheels were TS26. Um, again, decanted, thin through the apex. And um, yes, very, very happy with this one. Great looking car. It's the third one of these kits I've made. And it's a brilliant looking car. So that's the car build out of the way. We've got a couple of things here. There's three, actually, I said I'd never do again. Obviously, armour, you know I've started. Um, I started the Border Models Leopard. Um, so that is this. This is it, all built up in its raw plastic state. 
I got some nice pictures of it in the booth. Great, great kit. Really nice kit to build. The instructions are a bit rubbish, I will admit. The tracks look a bit fiddly, but they actually go together really well, so quite happy with those. Um, so I've got a few pictures of it naked. I then primed it in. Must have been UMP Black Primer, I think it was. Uh, and then we base painted it in Tamiya LP50. Let me see. It must be 58, 59 and 60. So that's nature green, brown and black. Now I originally thought the black brown was a bit light. But under research, it is the right colour. Tammy has pretty much nailed those colours, I would say, spot on. I got some pictures of it freshly painted as well. This was all freehanded uh, with the UMP Apex with the 2mm fine needle conversion set in. Uh, I think it was about 15 psi. Thinned about 70% with the Tammy Thin with Retarda. And again, came out absolutely fantastic. Very happy with the camera. Got nice tight lines. Um, with the Apex doing its work, absolutely superb. Just shows you what that airbrush is capable of. Um, with practice and a bit of time and patience, uh, I got the camo scheme I was looking for. Uh, I then give it a pin wash uh, after these pictures. Uh, so I'll show that in a minute when we go overhead uh, with my uh, Burnt Umber Black uh, oil mix. And I'm waiting on currently some oil paints to arrive. I have no oils, I sold them a while back. So I bought all the basic colours Windsor Newton. Um, just standard oils off eBay, so they're coming. We've got like brown, black, blue, yellow, green, white, so we can do an order filter on it. And then we'll do some light mud weathering, some dust. We're not going to go mad on it because these things are really well taken care of. They do get dirty, but they are cleaned fully after use. Uh, it's a seriously expensive piece of hardware, so they do take care of them um, to a degree. And yeah, I'm not going to go mad on this one, but we'll do a bit of work. A little bit of mud on the lower areas, a bit on the wheels. We'll do some pigments in the tracks, and then we'll do some dust here and there elsewhere. So very happy how that's going. Really is. It's just on hold. It's right there behind me uh, while we wait for the oils. So eagerly anticipating them. Like I say, we'll have a look at that when we go overhead in a minute. Something else I said I wouldn't do either. I've done it a couple of times before, but I always said I wouldn't do it as I took on a commission build. Uh, Peter very kindly contacted me on my last, I think it was the build video for the two, 307, asking would I do a commission build. I originally said no, and I said, tell you what, message me and we'll chat about it. And he did, and we uh, negotiated, and Peter wants me to build that. So Belkids Mark One Escort, the Roger Clark um, offering. So that's already primed up over there. Again, we'll have a look at that in a minute when we go overhead. Um, I said I wouldn't do commission builds, but I thought, you know what, sorry, somebody wants one of my kits built, but a kit built for them. Uh, so Peter bought the kit, um, I'm going to build it to him, and it should be done in a week, 10 days, hopefully Peter will be watching. Um, so it shouldn't take too long at all. I know the car kit's on the go at the minute, so I jump straight on it, and I'll work on it in amongst all the other stuff while things are drying as well. So yeah, nice kit to build. It's a bit, it's one of those kits. I eagerly anticipated it. I built it when it came out and I've not built another one. So I've been kind of itching to build one anyway. And uh, Peter gave me the excuse to do it. So again, excellent. Coming along, something I never said I'd do. And something else you probably ought to be pretty shocked by. Something I really said I'd never do again. I fancy building a plane. And I've started it. Not done a massive amount of work. I've built, well not built, I've cleaned up, primed and painted the cockpit. Uh, but I love the P-38. It's a stunning aircraft. This is a phenomenal kit. And I'm blaming Craig Peterson for this one. He built it, recommended it to me. And um, yes, that's it. That's what we're going to get done, hopefully. Um, I was going to video build it in segments. I don't know if I am. I really don't know. Um, I've got some footage of me going through the box. I've got some aftermarket. I might show it on this video. I'll have a little think. Um, because I don't want to ruin it by saying, yeah, I'll video build it. And then it takes all the joy out of it for me. So... Yeah, I'm kind of thinking, no, I wasn't going to do a full video build anyway. I was going to come back and show highlights. I can take pictures of that and show it on here anyway. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So what I might do, let me go overhead in a minute. Before we do, we'll go overhead and look in this box very, very quickly. And we'll have a look at the aftermarket I got as well. Added a few bits here and there. But hopefully we can get this done. Something's kind of clicked in me. I said this to Al, my friend Al, the other day. Uh, kind of not an epiphany. But just like I thought, you know what, soddy, let's just do these things. Let's build some armor, let's try and build a plane. Uh, let's just do things. Life's too short, you can get hit by a bus tomorrow. And um, I thought, yeah, let's just crack on, do some different things and go from there. So yeah, 
escort, a plane, and a tank. I bet you didn't see, you see that for a while, did you? Um, but we are, and that's the plan. So hopefully we can get the P-38 done. I love the Operation Vengeance story. I think we spoke about this the other week. Uh, or I think I might speak about it in my video, actually. But you won't see that first bit, sadly. Um, so yeah, I might, I might stick it in. Mm. Yeah, I did a bit of face the camera talking about it. So I might stick it in there. Um, I'll see, I'll see what it looks like when I edit it. But if not, we'll definitely go over and look through the box and look at some of the actions we've with it as well. So there we are, looking very good. Um, different things I said I'd never do again, we are doing. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I've already added to the armour, you can't see it, but there's, I've got about 11, 12 kits in the armour stash now already. Um, I'll stick a picture up if I remember. Um, so I've added a few interesting bits that catch my eye. Um, and we'll see how that goes over time. Really enjoying the armour. I've actually enjoyed it. The weather was the one part of it I didn't enjoy that much. But I actually have been. So shows you where things have changed and such. Right, let's go overhead. Let's have a look at everything we've been working on. Where it's at right now. And uh, then we'll go and look at the aquarium. Because a lot of people ask all the time. It's had a major trim. And I mean a major trim. And uh, yes. Right then, so the Border Models Leopard, this is where we're at now. It's basically the same as in the pictures, just I've added the tow cables and we're giving it a pin wash here and there. Um, so, loving this. Very happy with that camo. Um, very happy with the job it did. Free hand with the Apex. Like I say, it shows you what the, the airbrush is capable of uh, with some practice and time and a bit of skill and care. Um, I'm really, really happy with that. So, Made one mistake on the back. I put that cross decal there. When I believe it should go there. Some kind of light for fault convoys. So I've hand painted that on. Because you never get that decal in there anyway. Uh, and I've removed a bit of this. It won't all come off. So I'm going to probably paint over it. Or put a bit of mud over it. Which is the beauty of armour. You can hide stuff. But a really great kit. Um, it's gone together great. Now I put the road wheels on. But they pop off. They're only on poly caps. Uh, I put the tracks on. But they're fully movable. So I can still move them around to work on them. Uh, we'll pop the wheels off to do a bit of wet mud weathering under there uh, and then pop them back on and we'll weather the tracks um, externally as well. Much easier to do like this and try and get them on while they're weathered. Um, but it does look really good. I decided to put the uh, convoy, is a convoy beacon on top as well? Uh, just because I like the look of it really. Um, and yeah, I'm very happy how this is going. Like I said, I'm waiting on oils to arrive. I've ordered a whole load of oils um, to weather, start weathering. And that's my next step. So this is just on hold for a few days till they arrive, which hopefully won't take long. It's got great um, articulated suspension as well, which works really well. And the tracks, although they were a bit fiddly, they've actually gone together really well. Some very careful glue is required, uh, but really happy how that's gone. So superb kit. Let down by the instructions. I'm not going to lie. It is. It's just one of those things. The escort and build up a Peter. Uh, body's all been prepped, de-seamed. Uh, polished, prepped, we primed it. Uh, it's been painted in, uh, oh, what was it? Tamiya, Tamiya LP2, it must be, the gloss white. Um, nice, vibrant gloss colour, very, very similar to the uh, the Ford white. Um, so this was done yesterday. Uh, we can now decal it, which is probably going to be today, later on this evening or this afternoon. Um, I've got some tricky blue stripes to get down the side. Excuse me, I'm covered in paint and fish food and all sorts of stuff. Where I've been dealing with the fish today. Uh, I'm painting, not painting the fish, obviously. Um, so I've got a tricky blue stripe to do down the side. I'm in two minds of to use the decal, which I kind of want to do because there's a pinstripe top and bottom or to mask it. So I think we'll try the decal first. And if that doesn't have it, we'll do some very careful masking instead. Other than that, the other part of the scheme should be pretty simple. We're going to all decal today. We'll put a wash. I'm going to actually email Peter, unless he sees this video and comments yes or no, about whether he wants a panel line wash in the door shuts. White's a bit of a funny one. It can look a bit too much. And grey looks odd, in my opinion, on it. So, I don't know. I think I might message him. Uh, maybe I'll pull out one of my white ones out of the case and show them. But it's a star contrast. But then it does show the door shuts. Sadly, the door shuts aren't the deep. Door shuts aren't the deepest on this. So we'll see about that. So that's done. Chassis painted up as well. Uh, we'll get the body out of the way. That can then get 2K'd and cured properly for five days as my standard time. 
and then we can flat it, polish it, and we'll work on the running gear and what have you in the meantime. So, yeah, great kit, really enjoying that. And yes, yeah, shock horror, as you've seen, we'll jump through to the video about this first and then come back and look what I've done. Right then, let's have a look at what we got then. So, beautiful box art, typical Tamiya box art. Myself and Tim were discussing this the other day, uh, Timothy Ivers from the live show, just how iconic Tamiya box art is. And beautiful, beautiful box art. It's a decent sized box as well, it's not small. And uh, like I say, this came out in. Yeah? Yeah? So. Here we go. So we've got Tamiya's fairly new. I think it was released late last year. P38 Lightning. 48 scale. Beautiful, beautiful looking kit. Fantastic box art. Myself and Timothy Iverts, uh, Jim Toy Tim joins me on the live show. We're discussing just how iconic and beautiful some of the Tamiya box art is. And this one is no different. So very, very nice. On the side, we've got the two schemes. We have got to have a look. We've got Miss Virginia, and I can't remember the name of this one now, I completely forgot. We'll look for the colour call outs in a bit. Um, but it tells you the colours you needed there 6 olive, dry beard, 7 neutral grey. Uh, and just some side profiles of the two different canopies in there, too. I think the two different ones. And on the other side, I've got officially licensed by Lockheed Martin. And a nice picture of that interior, too, which looks really, really good out of the box, to be fair. It's a very, very nice. Right, let's have a little look. So I've added a few bits to this. So in here, we've added a mass set, uh, fabric belt paint GW, Edouard wheels, which are lovely, and the resin gun barrels as well, because the kit barrels have got a little bit to be desired. I was going to go for the brass ones, but these were a lot cheaper, so I went for those instead. I'm going to colour call out our instructions, and basically one, two, three, four, five six seven eight sprues mass you've got to cut out yourself never understand those decals and if you look down the back there there's three ball bearings for the weights inside as well now i can't go for every park because we'll be here all day there's loads of reviews out there so you can go and have a look but um lower wing section i believe that is i think it is i can't tell actually that must be upper upper wing section uh all one piece Beautifully moulded, absolutely phenomenal detail on there. The clear part, typical Tamiya clear part. There's a couple of different canopies there as well. So beautiful, beautiful. Like I say, our decals. Uh, we've got our tail components, the booms, which look to fit together absolutely phenomenally. Uh, props, our rudder, not rudder, elevator at the back as well. Very, very nice. Some poly caps in there too. Drop tanks, wheels, which are replacing, loads of other components, and then some other parts as well. So these are the wheel bay components. And you can see those little cups there. That's where the nose weight sits. So there's two there. There's one for the nose section, wherever it's gone. I've lost it now. Where's that gone? Must be over here. But anyway, there's another one as well. So all your nose weights locate nice and securely and easily so that's it like i said i'm not going to go through the box uh, there's plenty of reviews out there go look at one of those but the kit it looks amazing absolutely amazing so that is the kit itself i have a quick look at our decals these are going to be typical tamiya new decal satin because that's what they all look like there we go we've got some nice metallic decals down the bottom as well so these are not going to give us any bother really at all obviously we've got the belts which we're replacing uh, i got terribly dirty fingernails and i'm covered in primer from this morning's paint session so do excuse me i had a bit of a blockage in the airbrush and ended up covered in black primer so yeah we've got some nice decals there there's plenty of no steps and what have you there um but it is what it is at the end of the day and they shouldn't give us any issues the mass set you've got to cut all this out yourself i never understand the point in that but hey it is what it is. Like I say, I did look after market decals and I thought, you know what? I really want to do the Operation Vengeance. Pull the call out. Huge, huge sheet. Like, I mean, massive. So, this is what we're doing. This is Miss Virginia. As you can see, Olive Drab over grey. Pretty straightforward scheme. 
And as you can see from the top, Operation Vengeance, attack on Admiral. See, it was an Admiral. I knew it was something. Yamamoto in April 43. Then on the other side, we have got the Blue Nose. I don't think it's actually got a name. It's still a good scheme. I just don't like the blue. It's two on top. But definitely could do a bigger call out. That's for sure. And then our instruction sheet. We've got some info on the aircraft. As usual there. We're going to have a little look and a read. You can pause and have a little look. And some information there as well. So very good. And typical Tamiya instructions in the new booklet design, which is much, much better. Really can't go wrong with Tamiya decals at all. So no problems there. They're going to be really straightforward and easy. So the resin guns. Uh, I'll try and show the difference between these and the plastic parts as we go through the build. But these look a lot better. Um, worth the extra detail. But spent about £30 on aftermarket. The wheels are sagged, weighted. They look a million times better than the kit ones. And they're going to add a lot more detail. And look a lot better. So we're going for those two. We're going for the HDW fabric belts which after building 24 scale for so long look absolutely minuscule so we built these before so they're tricky but they should be good and i think i've got the right mass set i think i have it looks like it is uh we've got the edward mass set as well so there we go that's the kit that's all the aftermarket that's the plan let's see what we can do it today is the 13th of may uh, quarter past 12 so let's see what we get and how long this takes. So as you can see, that's what we got in the box. That's the extras we bought, just a few bits here and there. Um, I've got the cockpit, I cleaned all the separate parts up. So you've got the instrument panel, um, the control uh, yoke, I suppose it is, the seat, everything. And it's all been painted up. Thanks for a bit of help from my buddy Al. Two mentions in this video, Al, doing well today. Uh, we painted Mr. Hobby Acura's H58. Uh, I have no real aircraft colors anymore. Luckily, that's an interior green, and it looks to be the right colour to me. So I was given a few light coats of that, thinned with Tamiya lacquer thinner of retarder. Um, no, I didn't tell I Mr. Hobby level and thinner, because it's Mr. Hobby paint, I use that in it instead. And this is ready now for detail painting, a bit of decaling. It's got some beautiful surface detail on it. Really, really does. Absolutely fantastic. More fish food on me there. Covered in fish food. Covered, yeah. Anyway, um... So yeah, there's a bit of decal in here, some detail painting, a wash, some very light weather. I'm not going mad. I want to enjoy this build. I don't be worrying about if it weather properly and stress and what have you. I just want to enjoy the build. Um, yes, so that's the plan. So that's where that's at. It's kind of stalled over the past few days because I've been that busy with you and P. Um, I've just put it to one side for now, but we will get back to it. Um, hoping tomorrow. I'm going to get that decal. That can sit and wait. If the oil's probably going to turn up for a few more days, so that's the plan to get back to this. So that's where we are with that as well. So yeah, an aircraft, a tank, and a car all being built in the same video with a commission build. I bet you didn't think you'd see that for a while. Okay, there we go. So that's everything we're working on. That's the Leopard, the P38, the Escort. Yes, uh, nice variety of stuff there. I can pick and choose what I work on. The cars are great, but there are stages we're going to leave them. Um, primer overnight, paint overnight, decals two days I normally leave them. The 2K I get left five days in amongst that. I'll pick and work on the interior and the chassis and the uh, running gear, what have you. So there is loads of time. And the same with the armour. You do a weathering stage, let it dry. Same with the plane. So I'll pick and choose what I'm working on. I'll probably narrow it down to one or two kits at a time. I only started the Escort because obviously Peter wanted to build and I was kind of eager to get it going to be honest. Um, but we'll probably have a piece of armour and a car on the go, and then a car and an aircraft. We'll keep doing that, so still doing the cars and hopefully bike side, Joe. That's the next one I want to get back to. Um, and we'll keep it interesting, keep it moving along, because it helps me, keeps me calm, keeps me sane, and keeps me interested in the hobby massively. Right, let's go a little bit quicker. I've got a bit of shaky phone footage, because the phone's better filming the quicker than this camera. I don't know why, it just prefers it. And uh, we'll have a little bit of chat about that as well. Hey, so here we go. So if you don't know, this is my 80 litre, no filter, no heater um, aquarium. Uh, it's basically an ecosystem filtered naturally by all the plants and bio uh, bacteria and media in the tank. Uh, it's home to about eight endoguppies and well over 100 shrimp now. 
and probably about the same in snails too. The only thing I add to this is regular water changes, I CO2 dose it using a very primitive system and regular fertilizers uh, through a liquid form and I just give it a huge huge trim and I mean huge as you can see from the beginning footage and you can see the shrimp are all happy they're all feeding happy they've literally just been fed you've got a bigger mono there right in the middle of a piece of food and a little neo caradina is coming over yeah i'll have that yeah give me that yeah yeah nope nope see ya and off he goes the big ones can pick the food other little ones can't just yet um but as you can see they're all over the place they're running amongst everywhere all very healthy looking um i've got plenty of baby i call them baby shrimplet or juvenile um, yellows in there that won't quite colour up so whether they're like a um, skittle in between possibly um, I don't know as you can see I've got some very dark reds there's a couple on the left there the ones that are not quite coloured up you see a bit of yellow on them forming and I've actually given them colour um, colouring food today to help them hopefully colour up a bit another thing that's added to this tank regularly is bark as you can see there because uh, microbacteria grow on it and add an uh, almond leaf in there for its natural purposes and we have minerals in there for the shrimps as well and you see some more of the yellows there they're starting to yellow off slowly they're taking the time but i started off with 15 neocaridina and about 15 um amano which are the bigger ones uh the neocaridina there's well over 100 now the amanos can't breed in fresh water unfortunately uh the youngsters only survive in brackish so I've lost a few over time. I reckon there's a good dozen of them left. And as you see, we've got some ramshorn snails, some trumpet snails, and they all breed really well. Now, I've had a bit of an algae problem lately, um, hence the big, big trim back of plants, because the plants grow, they use up the nutrients, and away we go. Uh, and as you see, I've added duckweed to it too. Um, there was a quarter of that, sorry, there was three quarters less the other day. I cleared it out, and it's grown back over three days. It is crazy. And as you can see, we've really cleared it out. So hopefully that will go into some of the algae, and it'll grow back healthy again. Right, there you go. So as you can see, although that's an absolutely brutal trim, uh, it's still thriving. Absolutely thriving. I came in this morning, switched everything on, and half a dozen baby shrimp just sat there looking at me. So they're obviously breeding really happily. Um, no problem. There's a little bit of bacterial bloom in there. That's because I've done such a huge cutback on the plants. I've probably taken out over 40% of the plants in there. I had a java moss ball like that. And sadly, there's nothing I can do with them, really, because I've got no other tanks. James has got it in. Um, so, literally, yeah, it's a bit of a waste, but there's not much you can do with it, really. Um, but, yeah, it's it's thriving, absolutely thriving. Everyone seems happy in there. And, um, yeah, it'll get there. The algae problem I'll deal with. Um, hopefully, the duckweed will absorb ex excess nutrients. The reduction in light should help, and it'll just carry on thriving. We start this in September, so how many months we are in now? About eight months in, nearly nine months in. So it's it's proving a lot of people wrong. A lot of people said it wouldn't last. It, everything could die. Everything's really happy in there. We keep those fish levels, stocking levels low. Uh, keep the bio load low. Don't overfeed. Um, everyone is happy in there. The fish are unbelievably happy. Um, and that's it. It's lovely to look at, lovely to watch. And uh, a, nice, uh, a nice feature in the cave. Right, live show. Uh, as you might have noticed, we started going live at 7pm. Now, I'd like to stick at that. It's a little bit nicer going live a little bit earlier. It depends on a couple of things, and it's mainly uh, the guys who join, mainly Tim and Dan. They work um, kind of late-ish, especially Dan. Uh, I just want to make sure it's still viable for them to get on in time, to do what they need to do before the show. So, they're both back at work now, bless them. Um, so... I'll have a chat with them and we'll see. But I'm hoping we can stick at 7. It's a good time. We get done a little bit sooner. We're all a bit fresher. Because um, once you start getting past 10, half 10 at night, we start to flag a little bit. We're tired and, you know, it's hard work being live. If you've not done it, you'd be surprised how hard it is to stay focused and alert and not swear for three hours or so. Um, so I'll have a chat. But hopefully we can stay live uh, start at 7 p.m. Um, for sure. We implemented a different thing last week with the giveaway. I think we might try it again. I'll see what everybody thinks. Uh, incorporating the giveaway in amongst the voting for Dan section. It's to encourage more people to vote. So we'll try that again and see how it works. And uh, I'll probably ask for your feedback on Friday on that one. So stay tuned as well. Um, and that's about it today. That, that's uh, basically where we're at. Um, 
loads of different things on the go. Like I say, a bit of few here, like what the hell? What's happened to Paul? Um, but yeah, hopefully we can get these all these things done and move on. Um, yeah, progress and let's hopefully get some of these builds finished, especially the aircraft. If I can get that P thirty eight done, I'll be very happy. And I kind of know what's going to come after that. I think, I think I do. But I'm putting no pressure on myself. We're not buying any more planes just yet. I said that about the armour, but I'm deadly serious about the planes. I don't want any pressure about video building it and yada yada yada. I'm just going to build this for me, I think. It's probably the best way to do it. So there we go. Everybody staying safe, healthy. Um, I know we can go out now, but I, I still reckon stay in. We're staying in. We're staying away from people. Um, literally, we're in the storage unit today for some UMP stuff. We've got the doctors on Thursday. And that's it, that is the highlight of our week. Uh, me and James are having great fun in the garden. Um, I'll probably show it next time. I'll probably get him on with me next time as well. Um, because, yeah, he's doing really well at the minute. Very happy little boy. Although he's getting a hell of a mop of hair on him. Hannah won't cut his hair. Um, but I'll probably get James on with me next time. Maybe show a video from me and James having some fun in the garden. And, uh, yeah, so stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, keep modelling. Let's see all your work on the Facebook page and forum. Which, by the way, there's links to in the description down below. Keep buying from us at umpretail.com, which is uh, links to in the description down below. We've got loads of new stock, and including some border models as well. Um, yeah, and the Panzer IV, absolutely superb kit. Um, I picked one up. Uh, we've got a full restock of Tamiya and Mr. Hobby on the way, and we should have our Apexes and Primers in stock in a week to 10 days. All going well. It's on the way. I know it's on the way, so it shouldn't be long now. It's been a long wait. Uh, but well worth it. Stick with us. And we'll have airbrushes in. There's loads of them coming as well. Um, and we'll be fully stocked again. So keep buying from us. Don't be worrying about getting, putting any extra load on us. We are getting there. It's very real. thankful now that we're getting through it all. Um, we appreciate everybody's patience and support as well. And like I can stay, say, stay safe. Stay modelling. Stay at home. Um, yeah, check out my Paul ISM page as well on Facebook. Where all my personal modern work is shared. The Live the Bench page. Off a Hangout group. And of course, come and see us live on Friday night too. So take care, everybody. See you all next time. Bye-bye.